Hey everybody, come on in, welcome, welcome, happy Tuesday you guys, good to see you. Welcome to another episode of Let's Stay Together. I have an awesome guest here with me today. I am so excited to have on Dominic Sherwood today. He's awesome, hey everyone. Let me see if he is in the chat. All right, grabbing him right now, hang tight. Hey Andy, hey guys. Hey Tommy, how are hey. you? Hey, hey Dom, I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Yeah, thank you very much. I don't see uh, my angle. Sorry, yeah, get the it. angle all right. Let me make sure I'm all good. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Oh, thank you for thank you for having me. How how are you? Where where are you? Where are you? Going? I am based in Manhattan. Manhattan, lovely. Yeah. Crazy. Are you are you good? Are you happy? Safe? Healthy? We're all good. We went through some scary times for a few months here, but we're we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, which is great. What about you? You're in LA. Good. Yes, I'm in LA. Yeah. Um, okay. Scary times still abound here, but um, all just trying to stay home and, and stay, like I say, happy and healthy and safe. Yeah, man. I, I have to have hope that we're going to get through this if we all just kind of do what we have to do, right? Exactly. Yeah. F you know, fingers crossed if we um, keep taking the right precautions and the right measures, then we can. Stop. Oh! <laughs> It's not a great start. <laughs> it's all right. Live TV in 2020. Right. We do what we have to do. Got like, a, a, like a makeshift rig to try and get this angle right, but it's, it's, not, it's not feeling it. There we go. It's looking good. It's well, thank you. Thank you again, man. I started this show in March, kind of when COVID began, because I wanted people to come on every week and hear from people they admire for some joy and inspiration and hope. And you were somebody who inspires many. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for, for doing this show and, and spreading joy and love and hope. That's great. Of course, man. And guys, I see you're super excited to, to be chatting with Dominic today. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will ask a few as the interview progresses. So I'll keep my eye on them. And if you're ready, man, I have a lot to get to. Let's dive in. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm going right, to cool. retry this, my little, my little makeshift rig here. There we go. That seems so, so far, that seems to be holding. And that looks good. It's physics is what it is. Yeah, yeah, we're all trying to figure it out. So Dom, I'm gonna take it back for a minute. I'm gonna bring you back. And I would love to know, um, do you remember the moment when you were like, all right, acting is 100% what I'm meant to do. And what attracted you to wanting to become an actor? <laughs> uh, it's, it's just an attention seeker. I'm a massive attention seeker. That's probably <laughs> <laughs> like being the center of attention. Um, there, honestly, there probably is some truth to that. Like, I, I always was like the, the loud, uh, like, like brash um, kid. I think one of my teachers once, like on my school report, said the, the best analogy for Dom is that if everyone was sat at their table, Dom would be standing on it. Um, I don't remember if that was a literal thing that I did or if that was just a, a metaphor for how I behaved. But um, I was very young when I knew I wanted to be an actor. It was before school. It was before... Um, before anything really like five six years old i i knew that performing was was uh my future and what i wanted to do and i just sort of pursued that with the with the blinders on throughout my life well many people are happy you did you've had such a successful career from tv to movies to of course people are mentioning taylor swift's video style yeah. which which was awesome and some a dream to, to so many alone <laughs> but me included it's absolutely a dream for me too yeah man you've done so much and you know, I think it's through playing Jace and Shadowhunters that kind of really catapulted you to this level of fandom for so many. Shadowhunters means so much to so many people. So how did that opportunity for you come up? And what was that audition process like? Um, so it was, uh, I mean, interestingly, sort of this, ca this catapulting theory, like each sort of step, like took me a little closer, you know, like, um, yeah did little bits in the UK and that got me to a slightly bigger agent. And then they got me some decent stuff. Um, we, or we got some stuff together and then uh, I did Vampire Academy through that, which sort of introduced me to the, the, the world of what a fandom could be. And then I moved on from there and Taylor, Taylor's video was another sort of little catapult. Um, and then from there was like you say, Shadowhunters and um, so on and so forth. And that audition process was one of those ones where it's like, um, it, it, it's sort of it's not so much a thing now um, with streaming services and stuff, but there used to be a, a, an, a period of time in the year called pilot season, which is um, when all of the TV shows like try to get um, their cast locked in place for their season for the rest of the year. Um, 
and it was right at the end of a pilot season and I'd like met a few people for things but nothing had worked out um, and I remember in my head just being like man I need a job like I really need a job and then Shadowhunters um, fell in front of me and I was like not only is this a really cool project and a really cool character and something that I would love to be involved in but sort of got myself in that mental place of like I'm getting this one like I need to get this one I, I don't I'm running out of money so I'd like have no choice but to get this job um, and I went and I met the guys and it was uh, it was Ed Decter who was our original showrunner Michael Reese um, one of our writers producers and then uh, the casting team and I met them and it, I don't I did it's one of those you know you didn't hear anything for for ages and you're like oh well I guess that one's gone and then they called me back in to, for the test process which I didn't really understand so I met I tested with a girl who they were looking to be um, Clary and that didn't work out for whatever reason and you could kind of tell that it wasn't working like in the room you could kind of tell that there was something a little off mm. uh, and I thought it was me, so I, I was like, "Oh well, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to get this one because you can kind of feel, you know, anyone with with a, with a sense of empathy can kind of sense that there's there's some sort of thing that's uh, that's not working." And I thought that was my, so I remember calling my manager Rob afterwards and saying, "Oh mate, I don't, I don't has gone my way unfortunately." Um, and it turned out that they they fortunately for me did quite like me, and the girl wasn't quite the fit that they were looking for. Um, you know, not that she was in any way um, bad or, or wrong for the part, it just wasn't quite exactly right, um, the right fit. So I got offered the part, um, and then I didn't know what to do, because I was like, well, there's, there's no fairy yet. Like, <laughs> what's the next step? Like, what do we do? And then I got brought into reading all the other fairies. Uh, obviously, um, it, which was great, because I'd known that for a while, of course. But, uh, it, it was, yeah, a lovely sort of rounding out to that story. When you walked on to that set the first day of filming, did you have any sort of feeling that this was going to be something pretty big with the fans? Or were you kind of like, it's a job, let's see where it goes? Um, you, do, you do kind of know, especially because it was based on books and the books were so successful. Um, and then there was the, the iteration of the movie beforehand as well that, um, that was quite successful as well. So this is sort of the third attempt at, at telling the story. So it was, it was a, a combination of excitement because I kind of felt that there was something, there was a lot of that, uh, expectation around this project. Um, and also a lot of, uh, a lot of anxiety for me because I don't want to mess it up. You know, there's so, many, there's so many people, especially with book characters. And, you know, I said this before, when you read a book, um, no matter how descriptive you are about a character, each reader has a different image of what that character looks like. Right. So there's a way that you can please... Um, everyone you know the millions of people who who love jace from the the books there's just no way that i'm because i you know no matter what i do i'm gonna look like me so there's no way that i can match the physical uh, depiction that different people had in their imagination of jace um so you know all, all you can really do at that point is just trust in the writing and trust in the the creative teams around you from the actors to the producers to directors and just hope you know you do your best and hope that people enjoy it um and you know still to this day i hope that people did and do. Well, I think it's a testament too to the job you guys did with being books and the movie and everything else out there. It still was a massive hit. So clearly, mm. it didn't matter what had existed in the past. It's what you guys created that resonated with so many people. People are going crazy in the comments about this show. So, what is it about the series that that attracted such fandom? Do you think? In my opinion, the great thing about it was um, the the um, like plethora of diversity that we threw into it. Anything from, um, you know, sexuality to uh, relationships to working conditions to race, that, like everything was kind of encapsulated and we covered a lot of stories in kind of a, a magical supernatural way that were actually um, grounded in, in the life of, of every day. So I think that, that was something that was really, um, really important when, when telling a story like this, that, you know, no matter how, fantastical and supernatural, supernatural we get. Everything is really based in reality. Um, and, you know, they, the writers, all of the credit goes to them for that because the choices they made within the story um, are all based in, in reality and real situations. And um, I think a big thing with something like this is to portray um, hope and happiness no matter what your, your background or your creed or um, ethnicity or whatever it is. You know, there, there is whatever the challenge is, it can be... Um, overcome sort of with unity and love and togetherness. 
And I would imagine you must have a lot of great memories from that show. But does anything in particular really stand out to you when you look back at your time there? You know, the, uh, the, and it's such a cop out because it was the last thing we did. And I'm like, it's so easy to just be like, oh, the last scene we ever shot <laughs> was. So the way it worked out, um, completely by accident, because um, we knew when we went back in, we did uh, 20 episodes in season three, and then we, the, the show, the powers that be brought the show to an end, but we were very fortunate in that we were given two episodes to round out the entire show, which is, it doesn't happen very often. Um, we knew that at the end of that, that was going to be the end. We had the rap party in the studio, you know, in this place that we'd all worked with each other for four years. It was really incredible. And the scene that we did, just completely by accident, happened to be the Magnus and Alec wedding. Um, which meant, which not only was a very special scene for us to film, because we were not only as, as actors and as cast members, but as fans ourselves of the show, we've been following this story the whole way through um, with bated breath, hoping that they ended up together. Um, which, of course, they, you know, can you imagine if they ended up not doing like it would be terrible. Um, but uh, they, the really nice thing about that is because at the wedding we had all of the characters that we'd ever had throughout even almost all the way back to season one, you know, all of these people that we worked with, we were all together for this one sort of momentous moment, mm. um, which was really lovely. You know, we got to all celebrate it together. And, the, you know, I'll never forget Silic, our, our um, first AD, who again, because this is the other thing, a lot of the crew members who've been with us since season one were all there as well. And Silic was our first AD all the way back since the beginning. Um, and he, it was his job to say, and ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on channel. And it was a really, like bittersweet sort of profound moment of, wow, not only is it over which is really sad but also like look, look at what we achieved like look at what we did it's really it's a really special thing um and something that i will be proud of uh having been a part of for the rest of my life yeah it means so much to so many and let me tell you you guys put in the work like the amount of emotions in one episode and the physicality of it in one episode let alone the series I mean, you guys hustled. You you worked hard to, to create a beautiful show. Yeah, you know, we, we did. We put our effort into it, of course. Um, and again, you know, a cool thing. To, sorry, my dog is right by my feet and he wants attention. So he's like, oh. I'll be I'll be done soon, I promise. Um, he, uh, the, the, um, a good thing to remember with attitude on a set is it's never really laid out. I mean, it sort of, it does sort of trickle down a little bit. You know, if the, if, the lead actor isn't professional or isn't, you know, the cheery person that they need to be, then that will trickle down and that will affect everyone. But it also works its way up. You know, the, the crew, the attitude of the crew really does define um, what the attitude is on set. And we had just these like heroic Torontonian crew members from every and all department who worked, you know, remember that um, like hair, makeup, wardrobe, uh, uh, wardrobe is costume. I was going to say costume. So it's only been my job for 10 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like grips, set decks, um, production, directors, they all come in two hours before the actors and they don't leave two hours after us. And they don't have a plush little trailer to go to at lunchtime. You know, they, they, they grind and they work their absolute asses off. Um, and for them to have a positive attitude at all times really does make the difference on set. So it would, you know, it's, it's impossible for me to contemplate coming in and not putting in the same level of work that, that the team around me did because they're, they're so incredible. Well, that's nice of you to say because it's, it's true. The people behind the scenes, even the shows I'm a part of, they make it happen. So we know that. We know that well. Let me get a couple fan questions and people are so excited you're on here, Dom. Um, one question, and guys, I'm so sorry your names go by so fast, but I got the question. It was, where would you have liked to see your character go next? Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a lot of speculation about what would have, uh, would have potentially happened. And I think over the course of doing interviews like this after the show has rounded itself out, I've kind of fine-tuned an answer. Um, I think what would happen, personally, is the new, the new sort of like group of, of Shadowhunters, because Alec is off with, with Magnus and is now the head of, um, sort of the shadow hunter world. He's our sort of um, king's the wrong word to use because Matt will take it to heart and I'll never hear the end of it. But <laughs> like our our leader, um, and I think then because Jace Jace 
by his own admission, was, is always a soldier. That's always what he's going to be. You know, when he got promoted to the head of the institute, he knew that that wasn't his place. That's not his um, his his uh, piece of the puzzle, so to speak. So I think what would happen is um, Jace, Simon, Clary, and Isabel would be the four new sort of leads, like the alpha team of the, the Shadowhunters. Um, and they would just sort of continue on, like slowly saving the world. Over the course of the show, it, it became very apparent very quickly that like, it, 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 there's always something. There's always something. <laughs> so I think without a team like that, that world would, would crumble very quickly. Very, very cool. And let me get in one more for right now. And that is if you could play any other character on the show, who would you play? Oh, man. See, that's a tricky question because everyone does such a good job and there's no way I would want to try and step into someone else's um, shoes and, and perform the way they perform. I'd never do as good a job as them. But uh, maybe I always jokingly say that Izzy would be the best one because she has the best costumes. Um, but I think in reality, something like like Valentine, like playing a bad guy, like with, having moved on to sort of playing um, a quote unquote bad guy in in, uh, in Penny Dreadful, because he is, you know, he is a bad guy in Penny Dreadful, but also has, um, you know, uh, little sort of weird layers to him. Um, but I think something like Valentine would have been cool. Playing a bad guy is always good. I remember when I was in school um, and I was, I was probably about, or 11 years old and I got cast in the school play as the bad guy my acting teacher um, Tom Waits who's actually still a, a very close um, friend of the family uh, took, me a, took me aside at that point and said uh, was it Tom Waits or was it Mr. It doesn't matter you don't know who any of those people are but they were both like starting points at me for, for my career because they were such inspirations um, but he took me aside and he went just always remember the bad guys get the best costumes and then walked off and I was like sort of thought through it and at the time it was like the Batman Batman like franchise the Tim Burton franchises through like Batman Forever and stuff and that's what I thought of and I was like yeah Two Faces costume's really cool I like that one okay great I'm, I'm into it now I like that idea Valentine because yeah because of the because of the costume that's awesome yeah there's something definitely a lot of fun about playing the villain I had on um Lana Perea from Once Upon a Time and she plays the evil queen and she plays that role flawlessly. And we were talking about how much fun it is to play, you know, the bad guy or girl. Yeah, that's awesome. And before we move on to some other things, the last kind of question around Shadowhunters, um, and you mentioned this earlier, but the show touched on really important issues. In this supernatural world, it, it made it very humanized, you know, like race relations, like you said, sexuality. So as an actor, you know, on this show, what did it mean to you to be part of those conversations that, really, you know, speak to so many young kids who are watching as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the, the number one thing that I learned um, through, through all kinds of facets, not, not least of which uh, uh, poor behavior on, on my part, which I'm sure a lot of people know what that is, um, is, is education is so key. We're seeing that more and more with everything that's going on currently and right now um, is, you know, not knowing about something isn't ignorance it's a chance for you to better yourself with the with the knowledge of a group of people or persons that you have you haven't had that direct experience of you know I there are m many many experiences that we covered in Shadowhunters that I didn't go through as you know as a child so it's a, it's a chance for you as a person to educate yourself and then be the sort of um, like positive driving force in change and I think that's what Shadowhunters tried to do so beautifully is um, not only learn about the the cultures um, around them, because even, you know, we even had conversations um, that come down to sort of the nitty gritty of like Judaism and understanding why Simon wasn't allowed to do certain things or like understanding why a tattoo was so important to Simon, why that was such a, um, a hot point for Simon because of his grandmother in the camps who was tattooed with a number and it has that connection. So, you know, even just these things... Um, that a lot of people would just think, look, it's just a tattoo, don't worry about it. And then you have to learn a little more about that person's story to understand why there is um, a grievance there. So I think that's what Shadowhunters, Shadowhunters did four years, and I miss saying the titular name. So um, I think that's what they did so well, is, is um, understanding and learning and uh, presenting 
informed stories that were, um, for the most part, for the benefit of uh, the viewers and, and the world around them. Well, and, and Dom, I think that's something you do really well, too, is you have a big platform and you use it for so much good, right? You post about things that matter, whether it's, you know, telling uh, people that men really shouldn't be dictating the laws of a woman's body or talking about bullying or systemic racism, um, or you just did a great post for Pride Month for the LGBTQ plus community. So you put out messages that matter personally, which I think inspires so many people and, and not everyone does that. So why is it important for you to do that? Um, so it's sort of, well, first of all, like, as you say, um, I think having a platform like mine, which actually is sort of relatively still fairly minimal, um, it's, you know, a lot bigger than, uh, you know, my, my friends back home who are builders and whatever. Um, but, uh, that I think when you have a platform like that, there's a real responsibility because it's not just, it's not just like, Oh, look, it's really exciting. I've got X amount of followers and whatever you in theory have people, you have sort of a captivated audience. Um, and it, it's, I think it's same as telling the story like shadow hunters or any story. It's, it's important to use that platform. Um, in all cases to be the betterment of, of, uh, society if you can. Um, and that again, that's just my opinion. Maybe it's incorrect, um, but as many fingers and as many pies of positivity as I can, I, I, I'm going to keep doing that because, um, you know, anti-bullying has always been a big one for me. I know. He's drinking. I know. Good boy. Um, bless him. These little barks. Um, anti-bullying has always been a big one for me. Um, and, you know, then Danny helped me, he asked me to help out with that. Uh, Costa Rica because there's stuff going on in Costa Rica and again it was an opportunity for me to learn and read about things um, in depth that I didn't know uh, the direct information for then it, in it, each topic is sort of more individual you know when it comes to five for example my, some of my dearest friends in the world are members of the LGBTQ plus community um, yeah. and it would be selfish of me to not support them in everything they do because that's all they do for me they support me and uh, hold my hand and and uh, make me a better person just by my interactions with them, and not because um, you know they're gay or trans or lesbian or whatever it is. Not because of that, just because they're good people. So if I can support their cause, um, the, you know, separate and to, to our friendship, then of course I will. Um, and a similar thing with with the Black Lives Matter cause. Um, you know, it's again important to raise a lot of awareness. Um, it sort of started when I went to the first protest here and was listening to a lot of people tell these stories, these empowering, passionate stories. And then, and then it dawned on me, like, I do have this platform. That all that gets reported on is the bad stuff. It's like the riot, stuff like that. And that was kind of the case. So that's when I started, and I, I went around and I asked people, you know, I've got a, a bit of a platform. Would you mind if, if you told me your story and I put it on, uh, on my Instagram so people see that this, you know, this is about peace and it's about change? Um, I said, absolutely. And, you know, I, uh, I, I did that. It's just, it's individual, you know, I think, um, I think making a difference necessarily, um, so much about making these grand gestures as it is about when you see a need, it, when you see a need that needs filled, you, you take action to, to fill it as much as you can. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, for sure, man. I, I, I really commend you for that. I think it means so much to, so many people who those, you know, individual issues affects. And like you said, just putting more out there is never a bad idea. It, it can only help. Yeah. So I think, I think that's really cool that you do that. Um, switching gears for a minute now, I want to talk about Penny Dreadful. Yes. And, and people are loving that show. I think the season finale just aired, correct? It aired, yes, on Sunday. Um, yes. Now, this is the... Um, my, and cause yes, of course I would love to talk about Penny. Um, but it, I think as tomorrow in the UK, so I'm going to try and spoiler free as I possibly can. Um, to, I mean, there's definitely some stuff that I've already said uh, out there on the internet, but as long as I don't spoil the ending of episode 10, I think I'm in a good set. Okay, cool. No spoilers, but tell me about the show, you know, for everyone watching a few people, cause you mentioned Penny earlier and I guess a few fans haven't checked it out yet. So. What is the show about? Tell me about your character and yeah. tell, tell everyone why we cannot miss the show in quarantine. 
Well, I, well, you know, again, this is what's so interesting is, um, and this one sort of, this really hits the, the nail on the head with the social uh, allegory, the, the, um, exactly what's happening um, in real life being reflected in, in the TV show. Um, very much, so it's set in 1938 Los Angeles and the two sort of overriding stories are um, the, uh, the racial unrest between uh, Mexican Los Angeles and, um, you know, white America, uh, which is, was then very poignant and obviously still now um, we have some, some real steps to make before for, for positive action to be taken. Um, and then the other side of the story is the, uh, the influx of Nazi, Nazi uh, Germany into Los Angeles. Um, and what the number one thing that I thought was so interesting because of my character and, and where he goes in the story and what his uh, function is in the story was that all, a lot of this um, is based directly in, in real life, which I didn't know. I didn't know that the Nazis did have their sights on Los Angeles and they wanted to take over the movie theaters and they wanted to take over the ports and they wanted literally to have his eagle's nest on, in the hills in Los Angeles because he wanted it to be the first breaking ground for the new, uh, the new America. And they ideally wanted it to be New York, um, but as they, as they say in the show, the, it, the New York was run by the Jewish community, so that was never gonna work for the Nazis, obviously. Um, they set their sights on Los Angeles, thinking that they could spread across America, and obviously that wasn't the case. But interestingly to me, when I was doing my research, I was sort of reading it, and they sent us an amazing uh, like 100-page booklet of research um, after I'd done a lot of mine, reading through a lot of it, and I was like, I don't, is this like concept art? Is this concept work? For the, and it's real file footage of like Nazi sympathizers marching up and down Hollywood Boulevard. Like, and it's just so mind-blowing that that was the case, but it, you know, it was. Um, and I think the, one of the key things that I thought was so interesting about doing this show and why I was so excited to do it is because politically it's so aligned with everything that's going on right now, um, but set 60 years in the past, and I thought that was really fast. Wow, yeah, no, and people, a lot of people are commenting saying they loved it, they finished the finale, they think it's a great show. And now you did this show pretty soon after you wrapped Shadowhunters, right? Like there wasn't a ton of downtime? Um, there was a little, so, so after I finished Shadow Hunters, and again, this is something I've said, um, a little bit, um, it, it was really important for me that I took, um, like a very different fork in my career. Um, because there was some, there was some options for shows that were kind of similar, um, or within sort of a similar world. Um, and for me, it was really important that I strayed away from that. And I, not only character wise, but also storytelling wise, that I did something that was, very different, not only to what I'd done recently, but what I'd done ever. So I took, um, I intentionally took about three months off and then spent the next three months actually looking for something um, that, that, that filled all of, those, uh, all of those sort of bullet points. And then I mean, Dreadful came up and I read about the character and I read about the story. Um, not only that, but the opportunity to work with John Logan and um, at the time, the only people who, at the casting time, the only people who had been cast was Nathan Lane, Natalie Dormer, and Danny Zavato. And, you know, it's just a no brainer at that point. You know, Nathan Lane is royalty in the acting world, Natalie Dormer, fast becoming the same, um, and Danny as well. But I'd, I'd actually seen some of Danny's work and seen how fantastic he was. And again, it was a real, a real, um, a, a real thrill to potentially be able to work with him. So that was, that was sort of the plan. So it ended up being about six months off. Half was on purpose and half was not on purpose. Yeah, well, a lot of people are thrilled you found the project. They're, they're going crazy over it. It's a Showtime show. And a few questions asking if they've missed it, can they stream it? I, I would imagine so. Yeah, I don't know. Let's look. Um, I think you can get it. I'm going to flick my TV on right now and see if it's on there. I'm pretty sure you can get it on the Showtime app. Yes, uh, I think you're right. Yes, there it is. Yes. So you can get it on the Showtime app. Um, I know that. And then tomorrow in the UK, it is being released on Sky, um, which most people won't know. But if you're from the UK, no explanation. <laughs> and a lot of people ask you if they'll have more. They want more of that show. I do, too. I know I do, too. So fingers crossed, you know, unfortunately, we don't know anything at the moment. If I did 
Um, I probably wouldn't be allowed to tell you any of it. Because it was... <laughs> I, I, we genuinely don't know anything yet. Um, hopefully in the coming months we'll find out something, um, something positive, but right. I'm, I'm holding my breath as much as everyone else. All right, we're sending good vibes your way about that. Come on, it's gonna happen. And Dom, <laughs> I'm, I'm always so impressed. You, you just immerse yourself in your characters. Like you go full force. It's, it's, you can tell you're just fully committed to who you're playing, especially in a show like this right now. Um, so for you, what do you like or enjoy exploring about getting to play these different types of characters? Um, I, think it's, I think it's sort of um, like my answer is sort of in the question. I think one of the reasons that I became an actor and why I, why I enjoy doing this is because I do have this um, like plethora of different people to explore and to delve into. And I think that's what I find so interesting. Um, but then sort of conversely on the other side of that, like Jace, I really tried to throw myself into as much as possible. Um, Kurt, a little less so, because there are some things that he believes that I don't believe without, <laughs> without giving away his sort of um, profession in the show. But I obviously don't feel that way. Um, so that, you know, there are times where you do have to align yourself with, you know, this is what he's doing for this reason and there's a part of you that has to kind of almost empathize with that and feel feel it otherwise it's just otherwise it's it's tricky because you're just kind of saying words and there's no like emotion or passion behind them right. um, but then very very important that you take yourself out of that sensation and i guess the same could be said for some of the darker stuff that jace did throughout um shadow hunters you know he did some pretty evil stuff throughout the show when he was um possessed and and so on and so forth and it's very important to take yourself away from that stuff because it, it, it is um, emotionally quite, quite, um, I guess it's quite hard on, on, on your soul, right? maybe. It's, it is, it's, quite, um, it's quite harrowing to go through that sort of stuff and actually be the perpetrator of that sort of stuff, especially, you know, the, the, especially in Penny Dreadful, the, the murder and, and killing and then the lack of emotion connected to those killing, like it's just sort of another day of doing anything. That's really, that's um, really hard work and quite hard to detach yourself from. But I'm um, very lucky that I have the dog and the cat here and I can come home, cuddle them and play with them. And everything's sort of back to normal and happy and smiley. That's the best kind of way to unwind, right? Animal therapy. That's right. <laughs> I love that. And before I let you go, I'm going to get in two more quick fan questions. One yeah. being, and I've seen this pop up like crazy, Taylor Swift, how was it working with her? So uh, Taylor's the most... Taylor is the most incredible woman. She has built an empire on like songbird level music, but also, you know, you don't kind of get to that level um, without a scratch on you media wise, without actually being a really nice person. And she really is. Yeah. This came about because we'd met um, through my ex, like very briefly at Disney once. Um, and then out of the blue, she texted me and um, was like, hey, would you ever think about being in a music video? And I was like, maybe, like I just finished a film, so I wasn't working, but I was a bit like, yeah, you know, it would depend who it's for. And she said, oh, I'd be for me. And I went, yeah, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. um, but she was the most supportive, like I was nervous. Taylor Swift, I, I was nervous. Um, and she was really supportive and friendly. She knew the crew's name. She was a real, which it sounds like such a silly thing, but it's not something that happens all the time, you know? Um, and it, it is a really important thing. And she was such a light to be around. Um, and I imagine still is. We, we haven't spoken in a while, but it was just such an amazing experience. And she's such a, an inspirationally amazing young woman that I, I can only wish her the best and thank her for setting my career in the right direction. Yeah, and it was a great video, so there you great. go. I did a lot of that. So Kyle Newman was the director and the concept of like mirrors and reflections and projection and stuff like that was not only sort of his brainchild, but he actually did it all. Like it was all, the only thing that was, that was green screen was the, the mirror in front of our faces that had each other's faces in them. But everything else, the projection, all of that, that was all physically done on set. It was absolutely incredible. That's so cool. That's amazing. And the last fan question, uh, a lot of people were wondering with Kat, is it true you, you helped, you know, cast her in the show and are you guys still close? 
We're still close, yeah. I didn't help get her cast in the show at all. No, it had nothing to do with me. She came in and uh, did a did her audition, um, and the producers and the team liked it. It had nothing. You don't. We don't have any input. You know, at that point, I was just trying to do a good job in every audition, so I didn't <laughs> right. like, realize actually he sucked. We should hire a new Jace as well. I was just trying to fire that. Point. Um, but no, it all on our own. It had it had absolutely nothing to do with me. Nice, nice. Yeah, that question came up a bit, so happy you cleared that up. And yeah. my last question for you is, you know, you you are a voice of hope for so many. It's I don't know if you've been able to see it, but a lot of people in the comments have been saying today how much your messages really have helped them during different points of their lives. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, we live in this culture now that I like to call the, the comparison world. And everyone's constantly comparing themselves to what they see on social media or a highlight reel or the person who's doing X, Y, and Z and they're not. And I think it's gotten worse and worse. Like I hear people in their young 20s complaining about not achieving their wildest dreams. And, and, and you know, I try to tell them, take a minute, you'll get there. So for you, for all your fans watching, what advice do you have for them about coming into their own, both personally and professionally? Yeah, tough, isn't it? Because, you know, I, even I do that. I, I do that where I look at, like, the actors my age who are achieving so much more than me, the sort of, the, you know, the Nick Holtz of the world. There, there is always a part of you in the back of your mind that thinks, why aren't I doing that? Why aren't I in that? But then, <clears throat> and Alberto told me this um, when we were talking about this one day. He said, you know, you, you sort of forget that there are people who were in my position maybe 10 years ago who are now potentially looking at me like that, which is really amazing. And it's just the different people in the different stages are a testament to exactly what you were saying, that it's, it's your journey and you can still look up to the top of the mountain, but you're the one who has to walk your way up there. You know, you, you find what it is that you want, you find, and you can have your goals, you can be um, aspiring of whoever it is, if it is someone, but you absolutely cannot let that be a negative, a negative thing. It has to be in your mind a positive thing. It has to be a, a goal. And it is an achievable goal. You know, people like you and I are, are a testament to that. We found something that we enjoyed doing and we made it happen. And, um, you know, I think that's the really important thing. And it's, again, something that comes up. A question I get asked a lot is how, you know, how do you deal with the rejection of auditions and this, that and the other. And you've got to remember that you've still got your goal there and it's just another little hurdle that you've got to hop over because the finish line is there and it is within reach. And you, you should see everything um, around you, not as negative things, but as positive things. Um, little like challenges for the next step up the mountain. Um, and I think that's the best way to look at it and it's how I try to look at it. Um, because you're, you're right, you know, otherwise the way the world is right now, it can absolutely eat you alive. And I think if you let things um, overwhelm you in that way, then that's exactly what they'll do. You'll, you'll drown in the, your own thoughts of negativity. So look at them as a positive thing. Look at them as a good balance. And when, then when you beat it, not only have you Hundred percent. I could not agree with you more. That's advice we all needed to hear. That's the perfect send off for today, Dom. I think you are such a kick ass person. I, I love everything you stand for. You are beyond talented, and it was such a pleasure having you on the show. Oh, Tommy, it was an absolute pleasure to to virtually meet you. Hopefully, one day we'll meet in person. We can do one of these again in person. That would be lovely. Um, but yeah, thank you for for taking the time and listening to my ramblings. It was perfect. Thank you so much. Everyone is so excited you joined today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and until we meet again. Until we meet again, my friend. Bye-bye. All right, take care.